today on the GameSmith, we're making water. And before you Game of Thrones fans start giggling, that's not what I mean. This is Series 2 here at the Gamesmith, and we're going to be shifting our focus to modular water terrain. And the basis of our builds is going to be these artist canvas boards that I found at the local dollar store. We're going to start this project with these canvas boards. I found this large 11 by 14 inch or 28 by 35 centimeter cotton canvas board at the Dollar Tree. It was only $1.25 Canadian. You can choose any basing material you want, but I like the versatility of these canvas boards. Their size, weight, durability, and they won't warp as a result of being wet. I also found these smaller boards that were just as inexpensive. I chose these canvas boards rather than heavier and thicker materials such as chipboard or corrugated cardboard or cake boards or even MDF board. For now, we're gonna focus on the larger canvas board. Next, we're gonna need a mixture of water and PVA glue. In this case, I suggest a 60-40 PVA to water mixture. This mixture needs to be on the thicker side, but not like ketchup or applesauce consistency. Make sure to mix the glue and the water quite thoroughly. You want to avoid any clumps or gloopy blobs. Next, we grab our trusty aluminum foil. We can compare the sizes of the two surfaces in order to make sure we have enough foil. We want to make sure we can fold the foil over all the edges and fasten them to the bottom. When you're confident you have the right size, you'll want to loosely bunch the foil into a roll. We want to wrinkle the foil so that we can actually create a texture with it. Don't roll it up too tight or you'll have trouble unrolling it and possibly damage the foil. Be careful when you're unrolling the foil so you don't tear it. We want to flatten the foil out and stretch it to the edges in order to be able to fold it over the canvas board. Now when you do flatten out the foil, don't press or stretch it too much, otherwise you'll stretch out the texture we want to preserve. Now I'm actually working on two boards at the same time here, so don't be alarmed if you see me mixing and matching the footage in order to help me explain this tutorial. Next we apply our PVA water mixture to our canvas board. Make sure you get the edges too. Now we lay our aluminum foil over the board and press it down. Again, don't press the board down too much or you'll squish out the texture. We can fold over the ends and glue them to the underside. Don't worry about the textures on the bottom, however, you can flatten those out entirely. You can make sure the foil is pressed right against the canvas board by dragging the board away from the exposed edge of the foil. Then bend the foil over the canvas board so that there's a tight seal between them. As the water in our mixture evaporates, the glue will contract and pull the tin foil into a rigid texture on our board. I suggest waiting at least 8 hours before moving on. Next we have four colors of dollar store tissue paper. Light blue, dark blue, black, and white. The tissue paper will be used to simulate the water on our board. How we layer our tissue paper will help create the illusion of watery depths. We could, for example, start with black, followed by the dark blue, followed by white, and the light blue last. These colors in that order would create the illusion of depth. If we wanted to create a very shallow illusion, we would just use the white and the light blue. I know at this point just layering colors doesn't create the illusion of watery depths, but stay tuned. I'm just showing you how we use the different colors of tissue paper in order to create our watery terrain. We can change the appearance of our tiles even further by doubling certain layers of color. It matters how you layer the tissue paper and in which order you place them that will actually affect the final appearance. This is a very important idea moving forward in the Water Terrain series. Next we're starting our tissue layers with black. Cut the black tissue paper to be much bigger than the canvas board. Then with the PVA mixture we made earlier, we coat the textured tin foil. We need to thoroughly cover our tin foil surface and that includes getting down into the little nooks and crannies. And of course, don't forget the edges and the corners. These are the areas that tend to get the most abuse at the table. It also helps to cut the tissue paper to size ahead of time. You can just lay the tissue paper over the board and lightly press it into the glue. You can also gently lift the tissue in order to remove any wrinkles. 
However, once the tissue paper gets wet, it tears very easily, so be cautious. Again, make sure you secure the corners. Now on the back, we simply add the PVA mixture and fold over the tissue in order to create a flat surface. You may want to use a smaller piece of tissue or just simply cut away the excess. Make sure you let the board dry at least 8 hours before moving on. Now on a thoroughly dried board, we want to add our next tissue layer. You can see that the tissue is torn in some areas, and that's okay. The tissue has captured the texture. You can see we have excess tissue on the back. You can cut that away if you want. We're going to add the dark blue tissue next. I've already cut this piece to size. Again, make sure that the lower tissue layer is 100% dry before adding the next layer. We use the same water PVA mixture as we did before. Also, you want to make sure that you get even coverage and again cover the corners and the edges. Carefully lay the dark blue layer down and flatten out the tissue in order to capture the texture below it. You can smooth out the wrinkles just like we did with the black tissue layer. Turn the canvas board over and secure the edges to the back. Next, we're going to need an old toothbrush to help with the texture. Now you'll need to consider the direction of the flow of water, especially if you're making river tiles. Does it flow horizontally across the length of the board, and from what direction? Does it flow vertically across the width of the board? When you've made that decision, take the toothbrush and scratch the tissue in the direction you want the water to be moving. This will break up the blue tissue paper and reveal the black below it. Don't worry if you have silver from the tin foil showing through, a few spots is perfectly okay. When you're finished, I would wait at least 8 hours, if not overnight, before moving on. Even with two layers of tissue paper on the build, we can still clearly see the texture of the tin foil. I hope you can see the dark spaces and the texture created by the toothbrush. Don't worry about the silver or bumps, those will actually work to our advantage later on. The tissue on the back is flat and secure, which is exactly what we want. Next we're going to add a light blue tissue layer, which I've already cut to size. For the light blue tissue, we simply repeat what we did for the other layers. You can see as I'm smoothing out the tissue that there are tears appearing, and these are actually manageable so far. If the tear stretches across the board or reveals a really large area of dark blue tissue underneath, I would remove the light blue tissue and start over with a fresh piece. We flip the board over and affix the outside flaps as we did with the other tissue layers. And as we did with the other layers, we need to wait a good 8 hours of dry time. For the next step, we're going to be adding a white dry brush to the textured ridges of our water tile. I suggest a quarter inch or 5 millimeter flat brush with a crisp flat toe. For dry brushing, we want to load very little paint onto our brush and remove the excess so that very little paint remains in the bristles. Then as delicately as possible, drag the brush over the highest surface features. For a detailed explanation of dry brushing, check out my foundations video on the subject and I'll put a link to that in the top right corner. Now you want to absolutely avoid getting any paint in between these little tiny ridges. By keeping only to the highest textures, the white paint will simulate the tops of small waves or the light reflecting off the moving water. I also caution you against any instinct you may have to use a larger brush or to brush more quickly. I know the surface area is large, I'm dry brushing two boards like this. If the paint gets down between the little tiny ridges, the board will actually take on a frozen lake-like appearance. An icy appearance will work great if your tiles are meant to be a frozen body of water. And by telling you that, I think I just eliminated a whole video I was going to make. Anyway, we're working to approximate an area of deep water, and the extra white texture will likely ruin the illusion. We can move in a little closer here so that you can see more clearly what I mean. We want to paint only those tiny little ridges that we made with the tin foil at the start of our build. I'm using almost no pressure with the brush and I'm going over the same location several times in order to build up the paint so it's visible. This painting technique is called feathering. I want to share another technique with you on this second board, which is to leave some areas unpainted. For this board I chose the areas that had the most texture to dry brush, and I completely ignored the other areas on the board. 
Now that the dry brushing is done, I wanted to briefly show you the texture that has been captured by this technique. We do have one final step, and that is to spray the water tiles with a gloss finish. Make sure that you read the instructions on the product you use in order to get the best results. After the gloss is dried, we have our completed modular water tiles. When we look closely, we can actually see the fine details of our little tiny white caps. Also, the different diffusions of color hint at different depths. Even in the areas where the tissue paper was torn, we still have a watery appearance. The areas where no dry brushing was done still has a watery appearance as well. The techniques covered in this video are the basis for our water terrain for this entire series. We're going to be referring back to the processes we used on these boards quite a lot in this series. I suggest you bookmark this video so that you can refer back to it if you need to. And that's the beginning of Series 2, my take on water terrain. I'm really looking forward to sharing my ideas on water terrain with you. My players in the Riverlands of the Kingmaker Adventure Path are also looking forward to this since I've been teasing them about these videos for a while now. If you have any suggestions on how to improve this very simple and inexpensive build, I'd very much like to hear from you in the comment section down below. If you want to make sure to see what happens next, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. We'd also appreciate a thumbs up if you liked what you saw in this video. Also, please check out our website at thegamesmith.org and our social media sites on Facebook, Pinterest, and Instagram. In our next video, we're leaving the dark deep for the safety of the shore and building some beach tiles. Until next time, I'll see you at the table.